Today we're talking about the 1980 film, Altered States, starring William Hurt and I believe his feature length debut. And it was directed by Ken Russell. And I watched a quick video this week about the production of Altered States. And it went through quite a production hell with the writer needing to put it into a novel. They were asked by a studio just so they could make it back into a screenplay. And then they had so many different director options. Somebody dropped out. Then the director who started on this one, the writer didn't want him to change like any words. And so they had a feud. The writer pretty much disowned the project. But then it ended up pretty good. I think it ended up really, really solid and really, really reminiscent of early sci-fi. And I think this is the kind of sci-fi that I really love and that I learned about in school when I took a sci-fi class, one of my favorite classes that I've ever taken, because it's all about the human. And I think that's what great sci-fi does. No matter what, how grand the sci-fi premise is, it always has to relate back to a human experience. And I think this one really, really focused on in on that, because I mean, it's all about a mad scientist. It's, it is pretty much a more modern take on the mad scientist trope, just trying to figure out reality. And I think that's awesome. Oh, every film has to be based on a novel back then. You can't just write a film. Exactly. And it did feel very literary. It felt very reminiscent of old sci-fi novels. I mean, yeah, like Dr. Jekyll and Hyde, Frankenstein, Body Horror, um, Island of Dr. Moreau, which is one that I really love. And yeah, just body altering weird science experiments. And I really dug that. And it kind of had a more modern even though it is the 80s it had a more modern feel because it was very academic in an academic setting and yeah it was a scientist living in i believe new york city and then he goes to boston and he's just using an isolation tank and hallucinogens to try to figure out what reality is i thought it was awesome i thought it was awesome and i i do think that Yes, technically, some of the production elements, you know, they aren't that great. But I really, really did love the experimental stuff. Um, there was a lot of crazy imagery, even though it was a bit rough around the edges. Like, some of the imagery was absolutely insane. I love the experimental bits. That was so much fun. Um, some of the relationship stuff was a bit okay. And, I mean, the final message of the movie, the very final scene of the movie, it's like, it kind of did feel predictable, and a bit like I wanted more, but I get it. It's a universal message at the end of the day. We'll get into spoilers in just a second. But I think that if anybody hasn't seen Altered States and is watching this, I would just highly, highly recommend. I don't think it's like some of the other sci-fi movies that have come out in the 80s, as in it's more Cronenbergian. It is pretty, psych or not psychological, philosophical. Yes, existential. And... I really, really dug that. Some other like pieces of media I can relate it to are like Annihilation. It's weird in the way where it's kind of subverting some of the more more cinematic sci-fi movies out there. And it's a little more on the weird side that some general audiences might be not attuned to. But I thought it was pretty awesome being a big Cronenberg fan as well. So I think that really helped. But... Yeah, in, in general, I think William Hurt absolutely carried the movie. Yeah, watching a video on the production of this film, apparently that the director didn't like a lot of the dialogue, but was forced to keep all of it. But William Hurt absolutely kills it. You can tell that he rambles on a bunch. But like, I think the direction of this film, when they do dialogue, they do a lot of talking over each other. And it feels very natural. And a lot of the times... He seems to know that he's crazy, which is really good, I think. I think it's a very good character trait. He's He, like, knows he's a mad scientist, but he's still trying to go through with it, and he's just unapologetically unapolog passionate about what he's doing and expressing himself. And, yeah, I think William Hurt absolutely kills it. I think his wife in the movie, whereas she is a really academic character as well she has her own field to study and she like goes off to africa to study and everything and she's pretty cool but at the end of the day you would want a bit more from her um i think the supporting cast of guys were pretty fun and i say you would want more from her as in character wise not performance wise because i think she did really really good but i mean it just had a very 80s man feel to it whereas i keep on saying whereas when i mean just like and <laughs> i don't know why i keep doing that but 
I think that, yeah, like I was saying with the classic just 80s masculine feel to the movie, I, there were a few just like really funny moments with his character at the beginning. And it's like, I don't know how to feel about it if it's like actually intentionally funny or just like a little full of itself. Like <laughs> there's a scene right at the beginning where he gets with his wife and they're making love. And then he just looks at this heater and then he just starts to question his life. And she's like, what are you thinking about right now? And he's like, I'm thinking about Christ and like resurrection. And this one time my dad was on his deathbed. And I'm like, bro, what? <laughs> Please stop this. Oh, man. And she just put up with it the whole time, like unapologetically. And <laughs> he had some very like, I don't know. I don't know if it was the writing, but it was very much like, yeah science man unapologetically trying to it's like the writer trying to have these impactful moments where it's like oh yeah in this moment of passion he's gonna have this revelation but like when you look at it it just comes off like just man this guy's a, a lunatic and just like not of this world and then i mean it ends up kind of being true but uh yeah full on into spoilers i really dig the existential think piece that this is because it's just a fun exploration. It may not be 100% scientific, but rather than the exploration of an alternate state of reality actually being a thing and science experiments being able to complete that, which they cannot in real life, it's more of a look into what this guy would take away from that. And I think at the end of the day, I did have a few issues with the ending where it's like, he sees like the beginning of life and just the nothingness. And then he's super depressed because he's like, there is no meaning to life. But then in the final moments of the film where he touches his wife and she turns to lava and then she ha he has to like come back to reality and save them both. He whispers in her ear, I love you. And then the movie just ends. It's just this robot human scientist obsessed with his craft, realizing that love is a good thing. And I mean, ugh, it is a universal message. It's not the worst message, but it's just like in your face sometimes. And uh, I don't know if it's a bad thing or a good thing. It just at the end, it kind of makes you roll your eyes slightly because I really, really did like a lot of the experimental stuff that was going on, especially near the end. Like when they do that final experiment and he starts to go crazy in the isolation tank. She comes in there. Then there's just like this whirlpool of void in there. And then he's going crazy. And everybody's like, whoa, this is real. That stuff was awesome. Uh, that stuff was crazy. And then, yeah, I think at the end when they're back in their house and they start to experience that one more time, I did like that a lot. But um, And then it just like ends so abruptly. But I still really, really enjoyed it. And it's just like, yeah, mad scientist brought into a modern setting and academic setting was really really fun because he's getting away with everything he's a well he's a well-respected professor scientist and he's just like yeah on the side let's just have this fun with this isolation tank where i literally go in the isolation tank myself and become the experiment and all he's doing is taking some drugs and going in an isolation tank but man it was really really fun just to think about what's happening and i don't know it, it's a fun like little gimmick intro into the subconscious like his little ramblings when he's just talking to like anybody he just spews this random crap about how he's reverting back to his primal stage and how he's going to experience like the birth his cells are millions and millions of years old and he's going to go back to that instant and it's like that's a hard message to convey, but I think they did it really, really well, isolated to the isolation tank. And that's like his vehicle for this to happen. We don't need to see it happen. It's happening in, inside the isolation tank and not only that inside of him, but some of the like transformations that he's going through, it's like, ugh. that's the most like science fiction-y part of it, but just like, Having him go through the emotions of feeling just the grandness of the universe were pretty fun. It was pretty fun. Like that weird chase where he turns into an ape and then he runs through the streets and everyone's like, was that really you? Like nobody really said it outright. They were just like, yo, a monkey got loose in your lab <laughs> and he craved 
like eating a sheep at the museum. He went primal. He just had no instincts. He just wanted to eat, drink, and then go to sleep. <laughs> like, it does turn very silly at points. I think this face in this banner, like, perfectly summarizes the vibe of the movie. Um, I think that part is when he goes to Mexico and then the tribe gives him the hallucinogens for the first time. He's seeing a bunch of fireworks. Apparently, he kills an animal, but he, he denies it because he wasn't sure exactly what happened. He thought he just walked outside. I'm conflicted, but I don't think it's that's a bad thing because it's making me think about it, think about how I really like the ending and how the actual plane of existence in his in his story relates to his relationship at the end because that's what the movie was trying to make the core. Um, I don't know how I feel about it still. I did just watch it, but you know. Oh, pre-ET Drew Barrymore, Barrymore. Yeah. I mean, she's just in like a couple scenes, very, very few scenes. I remember one scene where they're arguing near the end. They're back in the, they're back in that apartment after the final experiment. And then Drew Barrymore comes in. She's just like pushing this toy. And then she's like, oh yeah, go play outside. Go play outside, please. All of the cast were pretty fun. I really dug his like main science buddy. Actually, both of the science buddies just had a fun chemistry with it. Cause the first one, he's like the quiet one the whole time. He's like, just like very complicit. And he just does everything he's asked. He's like, oh yeah, I'm just doing my studies. You know, I like doing this. You're a bit crazy, but you know, I'll go along with it. And then when he sees the stuff, he's like, he just finally lights up and he becomes like another person. <laughs> Not like William Hurt does, but he's like, I don't think I'm gonna sleep for a year. Oh my God, this is so invigorating. Oh my gosh, we finally figured it out. This is a breakthrough. And he finally just has the, like this huge science boner and finally like comes out of his shell. And then his friend who's like, oh yeah, if so, if we find something, you know, I'm just gonna admit myself to the psych ward forever. And then they finally do find something. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I thought their vibe was pretty fun. And um, yeah, it's a pretty self-contained movie with not too many locations. I mean, I mean, I guess they do go to Mexico at a point, but um, I mean, yeah, it's just like science lab, home, Mexico. That's pretty much it. There's not too much to it. And uh, I mean, this is just like a great sci-fi premise, like not too grandiose, pretty minimal, just like set wise with this isolation tank, but they do a lot. I really dug the experimental stuff and all the visuals trying to get across that feeling of, yeah, plane of existence. What is it really like? All these lights, flashing sounds, everything. What does it mean? And uh, I dig those kind of movies and trying to explore that. I think it's a lot of fun and I really, really dug Altered States. Glad I watched it. It was a really good one.